which Tina had corpse paint on her. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fucking sick. That would be She'd sick. be terrifying in yeah, corpse paint. Yeah, I know. Paint. Huh? <laughs> uh... What's up, fiends? Welcome into Forge Master Metal Reviews. This is the place where you can get the most out of your metal releases. Today, we're rounding up our picks for our favorite corpse paint designs from the black metal scene and beyond. Before we get into it, though, drop your favorite corpse paint picks in the comments below. And while you're doing that, swing your battle axe at the like button and hit subscribe if you're new. Time to grab your gauntlets and bullet belts. Let's smear our faces. Let's get into our favorite corpse paint of all time. Maria Franz from Highlong, leave it to me to start off with a non-metal pick. But seriously, if you're gonna be the only non-metal artist on this list, your corpse paint better be fucking badass, which it is. Mm -hmm. Maria Franz of Highlong certainly kills it here. I love the contrast of the pale white with the spiky bladed eyes. Almost makes her look like some sort of ancient wraith of the woods. I would not want to run into her at all. No. In the woods. She would like turn you into a tree. Yeah, definitely. That's the least she could do. Yeah. <laughs> One could argue though that her design would not be the same with her antlered headdress, but then again, when's the last time you saw a corpse paint without a fucking costume? It would look stupid without a costume, so. Yeah. So I kind of see corpse paint, I was telling you this a little bit earlier off camera, it's, it's kind of on a spectrum, right? You have Alice Cooper, Arthur Brown, really the godfathers of introducing theatrical makeup with edgy music, right? So I think black metal really took it to a more extreme direction, introducing the corpse aspect, you know, trying to mo uh, mimic, like, a zombified body and stuff like that. So a couple kind of different areas you can pull from. So you've got theatrical aspect and a more misanthropic aspect too. My first couple picks here are more along the theatrical war paint spectrum. Splish, splash, do you say Abath or Abath? Definitely leave a comment below with your pronunciation of Abath. I say Abath, so I'm gonna do that. Abath of immortal fame. He's just got such a cool fucking design. It's even better than Gene Simmons's. So eat a dick, Gene. Symbol is good. I mean, you know, it's really like a mix of war paint with like a little bit of that spooky zombie, you know, like you wouldn't want to run into him in the woods, but you might ask him for directions and where to get to the, you know, the pub or something like that. So like I said, simple is good. You know Abbott when you see it. It's a classic design. Abbott, awesome corpse paint. Every time I fucking hear his name, it just reminds me of... Hey, Abbott! I hate that guy. Saragor of Dutch symphonic black black metalers, Karak Angren, is one of the more contemporary musicians on this list, but there's something terrifying, classic, and creative about his corpse paint. Sure, there's a little bit of a gimmick there with the basis of the skull for the design, but it's so well constructed that when he opens his mouth, it just looks even more scary. It looks like his head is just detaching in two pieces. Yeah, yeah. Overall, though, the whole band has great corpse paint throughout, but I love Saragor's the most. Definitely the best in the band, in okay. my opinion. Gwar Arsenio Hall of the show Two Minutes to Late Night really does have one of the most spectacular and intricate corpse paint designs around. There are a lot of people in the metal community that have emerged in the 21st century as someone with a notable face paint design. There's just so many bands right now that are leaning into the masks, a real sign of the times, which is fine, you know, trends come and go here. But Guarsenio has just gone in for a way more practical effects route. It's almost like he's doing something archetypical, you know, like this is what the summary of all corpse paint looks like to me. It's just such a cool design. I don't understand how he gets it to look so flawless on every episode. It's it's amazing. Guarsenio Hall, you definitely deserve a spot on this list. Absolutely. I mean, seriously, not only is the content absolutely fucking fantastic, but the fact that he has time before every single shoot to make it look that perfect, he looks like an action figure. Yeah. Timeless. Danny Filth. Danny is interesting because his corpse paint changes frequently between all of the albums. If you look through the progress of Danny Filth throughout the ages of Cradle of Filth's discography, you can notice that he doesn't really stay the same. While some of them look kind of like a dorky, terrible Jack Skellington impersonation, oh. There's some downright killer fucking designs, though, that make him look like the undisputed vampire lord of Corpse Paint. Mixing theatrics and costumes with his face design, there's a great sense of cohesion and branding throughout the Corpse Paint that Danny just always seems to stand out against everyone else. So, Danny Filth, you absolutely deserve a spot on this list. Gall of Gorgoroth. So, the last two on my list here are probably the ones that give me the most creeps. I definitely felt that these fellas embody the zombified 
glorified aspect of what corpse paint is. Gaul of Gorgoroth fame knows that he is embodying a character. He is an archetype of all that is grim, frostbitten, and satanic. Satan. His makeup is fucking scary. I would not want to bump into him wearing his makeup in an alley in Oslo. He probably hates cities, though, so I'm sure he, like, wouldn't be wandering around in an alley in Oslo. But, you know, I wouldn't want to talk to him. His corpse paint is really, it's almost like Carly's haunted mask. It seems like it's attached to him. It becomes a part of him. It is him. There's no line in between the mask and your skin. There's no place I can reach my hand in. Was that a Goosebumps reference? Yeah, dude. I wonder how much he'll appreciate that. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> R.L. Stein will appreciate it. You had the gall to put that on. <laughs> King Diamond. I mean, who else could possibly top King Diamond? Even with King Diamond with his top hat. One could argue that King Diamond... King Diamond. <laughs> One could argue that King Diamond was one of the originators of corpse paint with his satanic blood-smeared perversion of Gene Simmons' demon makeup, obviously alongside other rock titans like Arthur Brown and Alice Cooper, as we mentioned before. Whether it's the bat-winged frame of his merciful fate design or his cross-dripping current look, the king has the art of satanic metal face paint to the point of influencing countless other metal acts throughout the ages. Seriously, just look at all of them. We wouldn't have Ghost without King Diamond. I don't think there would be this list without King Diamond. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. So thank you, the King, for <laughs> making all these things. My last terrifying pick for today's corpse paint is Frost of 1349 and Satyricon. Similar to Gaul, Frost's face paint is chaotic, grotesque, and just inhuman. You can almost imagine the satanic verses and chants that are happening in his head while he applies the makeup. That's actually one of the cool things that I really like about corpse paint is you know that somebody is putting them on while whether it's them or somebody else, it's like there's this ritualistic aspect of it, you know, happens pre-show or whatever, and it's like, I don't know if they're, you know, smoking a doobie or having a beer or stinging satanic verses, but there's something happening there, and when you see it, you know. It's like, wow, oh, wow, he has embodied something or whatever. Corpse paint, cool. Frost, scary. Frost, corpse paint, scary. Done. <laughs> <laughs> What were your favorite picks for corpse paint designs? Be sure to leave some links down below. And if you haven't yet, hit the shit out of that like button and subscribe, please. Go to the Gods Forge Masters. Stock up on your silver crosses and garlic. See you guys next time.